Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're back. We've had a week off. It's ANZ Open Division for Heroes of the Storm. I'm your wish. I'll be your host tonight, and I'm joined by Knight. Welcome, Knight. How you going, buddy? And good, man. Good to be back. How's it going, everybody? We're back after a week break, and I'm excited for a couple good games tonight. How about you? Good old you wishy? Yeah, I'm super excited. I had a little bit of a, I had a little bit longer of a break because you did some casting the last last week of the Open Division. So I'm real excited to see some really good games. Um, we've got some interesting matches coming up. Um, some good teams. We've got a, nine teams signed up tonight, which is great. We're doing really well with our team um, registrations, which is good to see. So we should see some top quality play. Absolutely. We've got the consistent eight teams showing in week in, week out. And this week, we're debuting another team. Team Run It Down. It's going to be the first week. See what they've got in store. Hopefully, we can get them in the cast tonight. And uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really excited. This first game is, as well is going to be a good one to watch. Yeah, we're looking at the ladder we saw at the end of that open division report. Uh, we've got, uh, we left school for this on an absolute tear uh, this season um, with the open division. They've been a delight to watch and uh, far ahead, the best team that we have at the moment. So we've got them up first going against, who are we going against? No? Oh, well, they're taking on against Funky Moon, a little rivalry being stewed between them for the past few weeks. Um, that kind of goes back to week three where. Unfortunately, we left school for this drop their only game to Funky Moon with a Cho'Gal play, and then they got their revenge in week four when they took him out on Towers of Doom, not dropping a single game last week they played. So yeah, it's going to be a good one. Uh, the band phase, we don't know what it's going to go with. I don't know about you, you wish, but I have a feeling that we left school for this will ban out that Cho'Gal. They did that last time. It's how it worked for them. Probably see it again this week. Yeah, for sure, that would make sense. And we're playing on Braxis Holdout. So other things, with the meta's changed quite significantly, hasn't it, with adding the extra ban. And now we've got three bans each. Seeing a lot more bans. Things like Rainer with his rework being really popular. Oh. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how the meta continues to evolve, see what we keep changing. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And like sure. you mentioned, with the UR uh, with Raynor being uh, now available, and him as well as Madan are going to be both playable tonight. Going to see it possibly rain or ban just straight off the gate. It's, he's dangerous. He's one of those heroes who fits in any composition. You know, he works with anyone, and he's just a monster in the lane as well as in team fights too. Yeah, for sure. And uh, here we go. It looks like we're getting ready to get this draft started, so we'll get into it. But yeah, you're right. And internationally, we've seen a lot of Reina uh, popping up in the HGC. Very popular. Not not so much the Asmodan. A um, little bit of Korean play on the weekend, but even Rich couldn't pull it off with him. So that's saying something. Maybe he's not quite as strong as Rainer at the moment, but uh, time will tell. And we're hopping into the ban phase. It's going to be, I think, Funky Moon taking up the first pick and ban phase for it right now, and then just hovering over it. I I'm not sure what will be the first one. As I'm, su I'm surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Genji banned, uh, Garrosh being banned, along the likes of those heroes. Obviously, Raynor, but like I doubt that would be a first ban. But Urel, right off the gate, that's not a bad one. It's a strong hero right off, right away. Yeah, and we've got to keep in mind with the changes recently to Braxis too, um, with being able to force onto the point. And there's that Gull uh, ban, like you suggested, straight off the bat. They didn't really think about that very long. Uh, but Urel, really strong with the ability to keep people off of the point, um, which is only going to make that capping ability even stronger. So it's, it's a good first ban coming out of Funky Moon. Yeah, absolutely. And there you go, Gal. They don't want to deal with that. And Medivh being banned away. The playmaking abilities from Medivh. He's a dangerous hero and it's going to work out wonders. I wonder if Chromie we banned out from We Left School for this targeting Electro. He was just a terror last time we saw him on the Rift, um, you know, in the storm. He's a monster. I doubt, he, I doubt they would let him through. It's be interesting to see what would happen, but down to last band, they're putting it down to last second, and it's gonna be Chromie. Hey, two for two. I'm on a uh, record. I think uh, they they might be tapped into to your thoughts. I think not. They could be careful. They're definitely um you're doing a good job. Um, so what are you thinking then? First pick. Do you think we're gonna go the Genji? I mean, it's something that we've seen uh, this season so far has seen such a high ban priority. So we haven't seen a lot of Genji. Um. And struggling a little bit, it was noted, uh, fin Geo Phoenix noted last night in the Premier Division, Genji's actually not doing Every that great um, with, honor, uh, with his win death. rate. Sorry, I went a bit stupid. Um, so yeah, that's interesting going with the Hanzo. 
Hanzo first pick when there's so many options on the board. Not only do we have Genji, we also have got Garrosh who wasn't banned through. We're also running, um, you got Raynor, still yeah. not being banned, picked up yet. I doubt he would get through to the second ban phase. Surely he'll be picked up soon. And uh, you also have Very Malfurion, and speaking of Malfurion, strength. he gets picked up for less school, but it's just a strong support, the utility he brings. Now it's back onto Funky Moon, and what do you reckon they might pick up here, you wish? Uh, well, I think it's something like what you were saying, the uh, Garrosh, maybe a Garrosh or a Johanna, something like a strong warrior with coming into that second band. It wouldn't surprise me coming into the band phase if we leave school for this, maybe consider something like a Decade. So they might want to, say, pick that up too if they think that's a pretty viable band. Um, the and the Johanna, the Stukov. Okay, fair point. That is interesting. Um, I mean, well, it kind of works in a way if you can silence the uh, control point, then it will be hard to contest it with the new changes to those control points you were mentioning earlier tonight. D don't know what else you can work with, uh, unless you get the Hanzo arrow. That can be kind of a composition that works well. But now into the next band phase, dropping down to last second, and it's going to be Blaze. I like this band. It works. Yeah, it's a good band. I mean, with the Johanna, yeah, Johanna Blaze is a very solid front line. Um, and then with the, the, the Urel gone, um, Blaze can pretty much hold his hold his way in, in any lane. So it's a really, really solid band uh, coming out, given that they picked up their tank and their support. So Yeah, absolutely. Now just wondering what else they can ban. I think a target ban towards potentially a warrior tank. Uh, Mirrodin works. That's a good one. I was thinking of Mirrodin. You also got Diablo. Who can work and now it's up to we left school for this they've got still plenty of options like the, the like the good old dibbles uh deheka for the solo lane if they really want to he can sustain to keep up himself right there so they'll probably potentially pick not sure what else though oh there you go deheka phoenix okay that's cool i like it yeah that's a that's a good a uh, good uh, th three four. Um, like you said, the Dahaka in the in the top lane, uh, very solid top lane. The ability of that global with that quick rotation, um, and then picking up the Phoenix. So Phoenix seeing a, a lot of plays, uh, very strong. His ability to his getaway with his warp is uh, very useful. So, so what do you think? We got a solo laner coming up for Funky Moon, and then another DPS. So maybe a th the Sonya. No, no. Sonya works, uh, solid top laner, can sustain herself, hardly has much difficult matchups, really. Um, does work against uh, De Haka, so they'll, they'll work out well. That's going to be just a colossal between sustain, sustain, eight, and leaving that lane. Lenara is interesting one. So it depends on the frontline warrior. I don't know what would work. Stitches! Hey! That's cool. Stitches. They've seen, I think we've seen the Geezer play Stitches on, I think it was Tomb of the Spider Queen. And is impressive. I mean, the geezer on an any tank is impressive. Uh, he's he's great to watch, especially as a former tank player myself. Um, so yeah, that's a that's interesting. I mean, he's got that that reach to try and pull him pull him off or get back to the Stukov. who's trying to get his lurking arm in the background. So yeah, interesting. It'll be yeah, it's interesting. I what I like about this really, and I don't know if this is ever. Like I remember hearing about this and watching about games like this, where you have Stitches being picked into a Johanna on purpose. And the reason being, it forces the Johanna player to uh, change the positioning of how they position, because now they have to position properly in regards to Stitches. So that way, if the hook ever does come out, they get hooked rather than a priority target like Lenara or the like of Stukov. And I like that because it's now becomes a mind game where it's Stitches dictates where the warrior positions. And then it's the reactive playstyle coming out from the likes of Funky Moon, all those who play Johanna. I like it. It works. Uh, in terms of board of control, I'm not sure which one. I like prefer Funky Moon's lifestyle. They got better way of standing than just holding their ground. Yeah, I would agree with it. Johanna, with her, especially with her iron skin as well, um, she can definitely stay around for a lot, for a very, very long time. Probably like longer than even like a stitches or something like that. Um, but with the Genji being able to get into the back line, that's going to put Lunara and the Hanzo um, at, at quite a bit of risk. Uh, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, how, how they go. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be an interesting matchup. Wait, which one would you go with, you wish? Who do you think will take this first match? We've got the bit of rivalry of Funky Moon versus We Left School for this. Where's your money at today? 
Uh, I'm at the moment with the play that I've seen over the four weeks that we've had so far. I, I can't bet against me at school for this. Um, they're just incredibly strong. They've, they've they've played some comps that I was even unsure about and just really four, nailed that play. So three, I'm gonna have to go with two, that. What about you? One. Honestly, I like just the whole control from Funky Moon, and I think that's gonna but we'll fix it. But as we go into the game, we've got Bot Slick on the glorious Johanna Electric Games on Hanzo Penta nice. with Stukov, Stump God on Lenara, and finally good old Pal on Sonya. And on the red side, we've got uh, Giza on the Genji, Tana on the Stitches, Nafurin on the Helium. Uh, Nafurin on the Hill, I keep doing that. Uh, just on the Phoenix and Old Shield and the Hydra. Yeah, it's a little good and just a little bit of a back and forth. Yeah, you got caught up by the little team fight. It happens, you know, boys like, oh, cool fight. Makes the players name it happens to everybody. But it's just a little back and forth. I like what Jester and also Big Gals are they gonna jump on Snuff God, pick up that first kill and that boss stick is getting quite low. They forced the iron skin out, he will be able to walk up to safety, but already first kill going aside of wheel schoolers and a hook from downtown down to the root. Electro falls. And it's just going to be a two for not even good old Genji going in. He's going to be able to walk away. You wish. Already wheel of school for this showing their dominance. Funky Moon. Yeah, turning with those hooks. And like you were saying, that Johanna unfortunately was in the wrong spot, um, allowing that Hanzo to get hooked. And uh, they're just yeah, executing. And then the, that combo with the the hook into the uh, the root by the Malfurion, it's pretty deadly. If they can get that hook, then, uh, then you're, you're there. You're done. Yeah, absolutely. And the Wombo combo working with, in a way, with the Malfury and just drops the entangling roots. And there you go. You're caught, you're dead. See you later, alligator. Not going to happen again. And the points are up. Bill score for this. Take the bottom one, and Genji will secure the top one. And there we go, the tick. But the contestant begins, and a fight happening down in the bottom. But the entangling roots are up. What's in the giant skin? It's a little bit of back and forth, but stitches be tanky, bro. And he's be able to soak up and just stand on point. Pulls back Electro. But then Genji is taking some damage from Lenara and they're gonna force quite control back. Yeah, and uh, uh, Sonya's moving in the top lane, she's moving up there now, but um, with the help of Genji, she's really pushed it back now. All G's doing a fantastic job. Uh, but oh, they're so managed cool. to get that Stukov, so they're really, we left school for this, really training out well. Um, Funky Moon having to retreat, they're all extremely low on health. Yeah, absolutely. It was a great hook coming up from Tanner. He's landed really on point hooks, getting priority targets. It puts the pressure now back onto Botslick on Johanna. He needs to be in the right position to deny those priority hooks. And it's just difficult. It, it, you got to play very reactionary to that. And it's going to be starting off with the full complete wave going in the sides of Willa School for this. But it's not that bad. The changes to Brax's holdout give. Funky Moon, some form of an edge, but it's going to be probably a five man defense hold now. Yeah, and we left school for this, doing the smart thing, leaving the Phoenix in the bottom lane to clear out that wave. Uh, if you leave that wave now, uh, you'll have some trouble. They will slowly get those towers, so they're getting that clear and then getting that uh, four man rotation up in the top. Push in. Another drag coming onto Electro, and he falls down, gets rooted. It's going to be one pickup kill with the minions and the Zerg pushing onto that. Oh, what? not going to do it, probably secure much. Still got the AoE damage from the likes of Stukov. Nara has to be very careful, gets jumped on by Genji. He's going to take some form of damage from the tower, but not enough. And they get another hook. Lenara falls. That's going to be the next target. And Tano is just on fire with those hooks, baby. Yeah, and then Phoenix at the bottom even has got the kill on that Sonya. So we left school for this. Just really exerting, showing the, the dominance that we've seen playing the, the four weeks that we've had so far. Uh, just unrelenting between the. Uh, the Furian guy. Oh, did he die to the support? He, took, he had aggro on him for quite a while and then he just falls. It was kind of funny to watch, really. Oh, dear. Um, I was going to say, the combination of what the, the planet with the hooks and then Orgy with those drags too. The, co the two combinations, you've only got, like, Johanna's only got one iron skin she can use and they're just constantly having that pressure. At this point, I gotta say, I do question the Stukov pick only because where's the cleanse? Because just like that, Stukov gets dragged, forcing the iron skin from Botslick. He will be able to step in front, but where's the cleanse at, at this point? It's going to be hard. Anyone gets hooked, gets rooted, they're gone. A Rhaegar probably would have worked better in all fairness, but still, 
Let's see what Funky Man has got to say to deal with this. Yeah, for sure. I know that's the risk, I suppose, that you take when you when you draft your support uh, higher on in the draft. Like with the you know the Stukov has picked what number three, and then the opposing stitches not picked to number five. So you gotta take those risks sometimes. The, sometimes it pays off. But with the Stukov, we might see you know post level ten uh, a little bit of the the control the, if he goes the uh, lurking, not the, lurking um, the shove, the massive shove. I give them a little bit easier to push them back. Oh yeah, absolutely. Get anyone once a hook comes out, just quickly shove him away. But then I wonder, I wonder if that would work. If you shove the stitches who hooks you, does he drag you along with him? Hell yeah. Uh, that's a good question. That would be some incredible timing, I think, to to get that to nail that. Um, that would be interesting. I would, I would love to see that happen. In all fairness, but we're gonna see both teams grabbing some merc camps to just aid them when once. The next control points spawn up, which should be momentarily at the moment. Bottom nice grab. And they're forcing in a top lane for Funky Moon and it's on tower damage. This wall at least expose that fall for themselves. You should be able to get it. The hook's not gonna drag them through the wall though, so they should be safe as well. If he comes any bumps until Electro, a little back and forth. They have to back away and Jess is just doing quite a bit of damage. Under the back line, but like so low. He, he pops iron skin again. Can he walk to safety? Walking slowly, can damn Stukov gets hooked. Genji follows up, he falls. Now it comes with the double swift strike, and he falls to the keep. I thought that's brilliant. That was close. Stump God just walking away with such little help. Yeah, uh, Stump got very well on that Lunara, getting that pressure onto that Genji. He was he was hungry for his blood, and. As we've said that, then they've managed to pick off that Hanzo. So, even losing that one, still not uh, putting that, keeping that aggression up. We left school for this, just, just unrelentless at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Have the two level advantage now. Have the hero talents. They're going to be quite in the driver's seat for quite a while. So, sure, both control points too. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, there was a little skirmish between Sonya and Dehaka, and he was able to take it out from there, forcing them back. Now a little duel around this siege camp. See what kind of this Tanner just walks up, sizing the enemies. He does have his ult ready. Gets silenced and he's stuck in that pool for quite a while. Genji falls up into the back line. Electro is quite low. Hook comes out. It misses. And now they just forced Funky Mood back away and should take this siege camp as their bread and butter for themselves. And all the while they got up to 88% on, on that cap too. So. Just there's not much, unfortunately, that Funky Moon can do. They can't really push out too far. Uh, so we were down to a level and a half lead, but still without their pin, it's just too risky. Yeah, absolutely, it's with a full Zerg coming down into the bottom lane, it's going to force. Well, Johanna's heading up top. That's uh, an interesting. They're quite seed this fort because it's just too big. Level 10, 10 talents compared to non-level 10 talents. Well, trying to get that level 10, I think, what Johanna's doing, but I would have upset someone else. But Stump God, so low, it's trying to get away. Can Dahaka get him? No, but instead gets to drag down towards Stukov. He has to walk through the slowness as well as the entangling roots. He falls off. That's actually all she wrote for Monkey Moon, dropping three members down and potentially the keep as well. Yeah, that was just very well executed. Um, yeah, like I said, I was going to suggest before they might go for a keep wall, but yeah, there's definitely getting those three kills now. That keep's definitely going bye bye. And oh, then. Yeah, absolutely. It's dropping down below, gone down to zero, and they're going to get another drag. Here comes the arrow. It gets done. 12 members, and now Genji falls. That's one. Can Funky Moon re force the comeback? Slow. They get to Haka, gets shoved away to safety. Thanks, bro. I like the free trips back to home. <laughs> so why not? That worked out. They out able to pick up one kill, but they lose a the keep in the end. And that's just we left school for this in the driver's seat. Yeah, that that massive shove was almost really unfortunate. And I'm not quite sure if Dahaka was necessarily getting out of that position, but that massive shove definitely saved his life. As an unfortunate move by Penta, but uh, the Funky Moon making the decision to just go for the boss. Um, yeah, at this point, they're going to lose someone to the boss. That's really unfortunate. They really needed to make a move, and maybe it wasn't. They were able to get the boss, so they are going to secure the Hail Mary boss, but now Tanner's so low. Can they get a kill? They're trying to retreat. Here comes the Salvo. It's going to do some damage. 
forcing Stukov and Lenaro to run away if Shahana falls. And that's a two for nothing trade. They did get the boss though to deny that from Wheel of School, but is it going to be enough? Not sure. Who knows? We'll have to see as time will tell. And now Stukov, oh no, buddy, don't do it. Walks in, gets hooked, gets rooted, he falls, and now Electro is just going to walk away like nothing. Yeah, and unfortunately, uh, Electro used his uh, Dragon's Arrow then. So it was good that they couldn't necessarily get uh, the follow-up on, onto him, but then that's you know, 60 seconds that they don't have that up. So that was an unfortunate use of that. But um, the hacker just, you know, finally slowly getting that boss. That's a boss that's not going to quite even get that fort in bottom. So, um, But they did manage to get the top fort uh, with that wave because we left school for this, decided to push with the fight. So they gave them a little bit of a boost of experience. The amount of experience you're going to get from those buildings now when you're a little bit far behind gives you a little bit closer. Not quite 13 yet though, but they're getting there. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to be a talent tier behind come the next beacon activation phase. They're going to try and soak up as much as they can. Got the Lanara heading down the bottom lane. And Sonya back in top. Try and get that sweet, sweet level 13. Meanwhile, we love school for this, just gonna grab as much Merc Camps as they possibly can. And if set the sides up for Sonya, I've gotta be careful. But Jester and uh, Ether rotating up, not gonna get anything from there. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, three of the members are pushing and just getting rid of this Merc Camp that's just there for Monkey Moon. Yeah, and they haven't managed to get the 13 yet. Hopefully, they, they can uh, get it before uh, the beacon progress ends. They're gonna force this fight though, and they're gonna force a way onto the, onto the thing stop. We left school for this from uh, capping that just, just, just yet. Ooh, and that was a hook straight onto Stukov. Tano has just been deadly. The arrow miss, missing everybody for like, they're just hopping on secure onto Stukov. That's it side off of Lenar. Get hooked in for death. Field. And unfortunately, Hanzo getting chased on. Genji's onto him. There's Malfurion as well. Yeah, the Haka gets the drag. It's all that's left is just Sonya and Johanna, but they can't do anything as we left school for this. Just dismantling Funky Moon. Yeah, that was uh, very well played. We've seen that, like you said, uh, Tana with those hooks, he's nailing almost everyone with the follow up on the Mafia and just the complete lockdown. And then uh, Giza coming in on that Genji, just cleaning up with his Dragon Blade. Um, one kill turns into three, just like that. Yeah, absolutely. And now they have the level 16, they've got this almost last talent here. So, advantage over that three levels. But behind is Funky Moon, and they've got a massive wall to climb if they're going to try and catch up. It's going to be difficult. It's all or nothing on this defense as the Zerg minions are going to be barreling hard in the top lane. Yeah, for sure. And we, if uh, we left school for this, can pull off maybe one or two kills, and we're definitely possibly looking at the end of the game. Like uh, the three level advantage. Um, and Can't the do that one. I'll do that when Hanzo gets hooked. That's going to be one member down for Funky Moon. They just decide to be like, okay, great. Walk away. Stukov gets hooked again. Tanner, just a monster. Gets shoved away. Then comes a salvo. We'll be able to grab two members. No, Stukov falls. Johanna walking away. You've got Lenara, who somehow avoided the hook from Tanner. That's interesting. And that is going to be four members, three members down. Hanzo will be up. Be back up soon. But Funky Moon are just going to walk away from it. like It's going to be impossible to defend this now. It's GG for the life of Wheel of School for this. Unless a miracle happens, but no. Nah. Yeah, that's going to slowly wheel their way down. They've still got 10 seconds. they more than likely probably going to be able to finish this off now. Um, just harassing them at their own. Uh, Altar of the Storms keeping them away while they do the rest of the damage. Yeah, absolutely, and just Genji filling the balls he plays, so I just hop in, but that's going to be Will of School for this, taking up the first game of this first round against Funky Moon, solidifying their revenge ploy from Week 3's defeat, and that was just a crisp, crisp gameplay coming out from Will of School for this. Yeah, for sure. Um, you can't you can't really fault them at the moment. They're they're playing at their A game. I think after watching uh, we left school for this for the last year to year and a half in open division, this they've really come out with something to prove uh, this time. They're just constantly getting better. Said so they you know, dropped that game to try with the Choi Gold of Funky Moon earlier in the season, um, one or two games maybe early on, but they just keep getting stronger and stronger. And that their their synergy is just really really good at the moment. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. They just look dangerous. The communication as well between Tana and Malfuri and just getting the hook straight onto Entangling Roots was just Mickey. It was brilliant. It was great to see. And that was a, a wonderful match. Funky Moon, they put up a fight. Just when you get hooked, what, what can you do? You got to fall. It's, it's just unfortunate. It's just one of those days. Yeah, that's it. Unfortunately, in a game with two teams, one team has to lose, unfortunately. All right, guys. So that's game one done. Uh, what we're going to do now is go to a five-minute break. So uh, go get a drink, do what you need to do, and we'll see you soon.